Hi everyone, boys and girls. My name is Adeboye Adegbenro, and right now I'm about to share with you how to create some animation inside of Flipboom. What I'm about to show you is one of the principles of animation called squash and stretch. I'm going to be moving a green ball across the screen to demonstrate how frame by frame animation is done in Flipboom. To your left right here are your uh, tools. This is a selection tool, brush, pencil, eraser, paint, bucket, uh, your text, rectangle, ellipsis, two other tools, and the eyedropper. And also you can change your drawing size here. All this I'll be explaining as we go. And on the left are more extra animation tools for you to use. Down here is how to zoom in, how to zoom out, and uh, how to turn your, your table, your animation table, so that you could draw sideways if you want, or make some strokes to come down if you want. And here is to fill up the screen, the aspect ratio, which is the size of your animation on the edges that is this is help you to focus your animation so you are not seeing extra stuff on the outside of it this is a move this hand tool is a move tool to help you move your drawing up or down and this is your onion skin I will call this onion skin because in Toon Boom Animate you have this uh, more advanced onion skin but this is your type of onion skin that you'll be able to see through your drawings like your drawings are laid on top of glass or your drawing is drawn on a plastic clear plastic so you could see through many layers of drawings and this is your start point from your animation which will be your number one and this will be your end point which could be any number how you want to stretch your animation and this is how to loop your animation so they play over and over again and this is how to play your animation this is your time your, your time frame speed is done for you here so you don't have to struggle with timing when you move it forward it's, it's faster when you pull it backwards it's slower and here you see an icon that helps you to know that it's fast going this way and it's slower going that way so here you have a way to erase your frame if you want to erase one frame you click here if you need to to add a frame you click here if you need to duplicate a page you click here and if you need to delete a, a page or a frame you click here and here you have your paintbrush always go back here to do your selection but right now we are inside the paint and draw tool toolbox and this is what you will see on your left side at the top here here you see something uh, like two sheets of paper on top of each other that's telling you to copy and this is telling you to paste and this is your undo and this is your do this is how to cut a frame or cut a drawing off this is how to store your images and this is how to save your images to look for your for some images and files and all that so um, I'm gonna go ahead and start to draw and do the uh, bouncing ball exercise so you could see exactly how this animation is done so the interface is laid out so you could move easily and it's very simple compared to many applications and I'm gonna draw uh, a path I'll draw this path for the ball to go through I'm using red so I could see the path clearly and I'm gonna draw this path 
to help you see how the ball should be bouncing and then my lines are not really perfectly straight or curved the way I would want it but it's good enough to show this exercise so I'll move this drawing down from one you can just click on your 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 mouse and drag the drawing down to the next frame which is your background background level and this background layer you will be able to make extra copies you make extra copies and then you go back to your character layer where you want your ball to be and then that's where you'll be uh, creating your animation but down here is where the the, the uh, path that the ball is going to go through is so to help you see how each frame should be placed and where each frame should be placed so I'm going to draw with this ellipse tool I'm going to draw a small ball and then add some color to it so I select black and draw the ball not too big right about there and then I select my paint bucket select green and paint the inside of it green and another trick is to paint outside of it dark green just to make it look realistic enough so I select my ball with my selection tool and then move it out of range like it's coming from the left into the frame into onto the screen so my ball is now my actor so I make a copy of the ball to number two and I select the ball I will select the ball and make sure the ball goes through the path and make sure that the center of the ball is right at the center of the path that is the pivot point will be right on the line so if it's not right on the line I have to move it I have to move it to make sure it sits exactly on the line so you have to try your best to make sure it it's located right on the line and that's very good and another thing is don't stretch your ball just move it use the crosshair sign to move your ball down don't stretch it up don't stretch it down because that way the animation will be strobing you don't want the drawings to be going up and down and be getting larger and smaller so I copy number three and I move my ball to number three and you could see the the ghost image of number two drawing and the ghost and then I keep copying I copy number four and move it down and keep going on until I get to that point down there where I have to squash the ball so I select the ball again and move it down and make sure it touches the ground where the, the line ends and then I squash the ball on number five and I stretch the ball out a little bit on the side so it could relate closely with the, the size of the ball that I had initially so they look the same you don't want to squash it in a way that it gets smaller so you want to keep the volume of the ball relatively the same just like this on number five on number four on number three the balls are the same and the ball be bouncing through the line and uh, and follow the line all the way down to the end so I'm not going to draw everything but I'll draw um, enough for us to see the animation so number six is squashed and uh, move it up it's going to be changing size as it bounces back up so I place it fairly nicely 
to make sure it's still on the line so as you can see it's moving up it's bouncing up so I don't have to make a duplicate of this stretched ball a uh, squashed ball I don't have to make I have to copy from the 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 round ones the ones that are so I click on my copy and then paste it on number seven then I move it I move it to move it forward to where it should be on number seven because the ball is traveling up at this point on number seven on number eight I don't have to copy again I just move it I, I still copy but I don't have to uh, make a copy by going up there to select the copy icon so now I'm following the path all the way down and um, I make a copy I move the ball down the ball will not stretch until it touches that end of the line so because it's gonna stretch when it gets to number 10 I had to copy it and then I have to create more frames create more frames so that I will have more paths to work with so I select the copied image and move it to number 10 so the stretch the squashed ball is now copied and moved to number 10 from number 5 so now I have extra copies to be made so I copy number 6 and move it to number 11 so that it gives me exactly the same repetition of what happened between 6 and 7 so number 10 and 11 are exactly the same drawings and um, keep on moving keep on moving by copying previous drawings and moving it forward so I keep on copying and repeat the same drawing forward as I'm moving the ball so it corresponds with the next drawing so now I have a complete animation the ball feels like it's bouncing and moving forward and it's got energy that's what you want to express if you make a, a more bouncy line like I have here if you make the line too bouncy then it will look very exaggerated like it's it's a goofball or it's uh, made out, out of very very soft material and could bounce like a tennis ball so now I'm deleting everything on the background level layer I deleted everything so you don't have uh, anything left so you can see the animation going on and I'm going to select some background from the background layer and um, I selected this background and pull it click and pull and drag into this onto the screen and now that it's on the screen I have to size it uh, I'm not sure if the ball will bounce right now I only have one frame of it and one frame of it is on number one so I have to make extra frame frames to fill up until the animation is complete so I make extra frames to number 14 and I could delete some if I want so I delete some and then I will now play the animation from number one
it looks like the ball is not touching the ground so that's one little problem this is good to know because this is how you could help yourself and adjust these drawings as you're going so I'll go back to my selection tool select my ball and the problem now is because I've not selected the background yet so I have to go down and select the background and then be able to select the ball so I keep stretching the background to see just to measure how long how wide how far should I pull this background so that the ball could bounce and uh, I see that there's a problem because I only did one background and I have to go back and delete all these drawings uh, all the background drawings I have to delete them and recreate the background so that it fits perfectly so that the ball could land on the floor so I go to my minus sign and delete the rest of the drawings and leave only one drawing uh, make sure it's only one drawing left so I select again and drag up move the use my cursor to move the background up and drag down and then drag up again and size it in a way that it fills the screen and make sure it fills the screen and I'll play the the bouncing ball animation and go back to number one select it and then make copies of it make duplicates of it and delete some So as you can see, the ball is bouncing right. It's touching the floor. And I, I hope you enjoyed this animation and hope to see you next time. And uh, God bless. So that completes our animation, uh, bouncing ball animation. And I hope you can join me again. Again, my name is Adeboye Adegmenro. I'm an animator. And I'll be visiting you on YouTube and elsewhere all, all around the world so you can uh, learn some animation, principles of animation, and other things like drawing characters in animation and making uh, special effects in animation and other stuff. Good luck. Bye.